The Miami Heat are one of the most interesting stories of the NBA season. Remember, this was a team who made a surprise trip to the NBA Finals last season as a five seed. Then they came back this year with basically the same team, and naturally, fans were expecting big things from the Miami Heat again. But instead, go back to late January, a month into the season, and they are in the midst of a five-game losing streak, and they had lost eight out of ten games. All total, they'd only won a third of their games, and they were looking in from the outside of the playoff picture, and they were just playing like a completely different team than pretty much everybody expected. It was looking like last season's Cinderella run to the finals was a total fluke. But then the switch got flipped. As of this recording, the Miami Heat have won 10 of their last 15 games and are on a five-game winning streak. That includes victories over the Utah Jazz and LA Lakers, two of the best teams in the NBA. In this video, I explain how the Miami Heat turned it around, and I'm telling you the trade this team has to make to compete for a championship. Hey, it's Troy. Hit subscribe and make sure to turn on those notification bells. I have fresh NBA content several times a week on this channel. Make sure to leave a like while you're here as well. It really helps out the channel. 400 likes is always the goal. And guys, on a side note, thanks so much to everybody out there for helping me pass 12,000 subscribers. Glad you're all a part of this YouTube journey with me. Big things are ahead, and we are just getting started. If you're a Miami Heat fan, I think you're going to love this video, and you got to be feeling pretty good about your team right about now. Here we are a little over two months into the season, and the Heat are heading into the All-Star break firing on all cylinders. So I'm going to lay out a few reasons as to why this Miami Heat team is finally playing like we expected them to. The first reason, it's going to be Jimmy Butler, plain and simple. He is the Heat's best player. He scores, he defends, he gets his teammates fired up. He is the heart and soul of this team. He missed the majority of January with COVID health and safety protocols. And, you know, no surprise, that's when the Heat were going through their losing streak and looked like a completely different team because when your best player is out, you are a completely different team. But since Jimmy Butler has come back, the Heat are in sync with their leader at the helm. They seem super motivated to make up for lost time. And if we're talking about players that the Heat missed, then I gotta mention Goran Dragic too. I was really excited when the Heat re-signed Dragic during the offseason. Like Jimmy though, he was also out for a number of games. He had an ankle injury he was dealing with. Recently came back and you can tell with this Miami team. He's one of the best reserves in the league. His presence on the bench helps steady a lot of the younger players. When he's out there, it makes the other guys more comfortable, more confident. And just all in all, the team plays better. Remember, Dragic is a former All-Star. And even though he might not be All-Star level anymore, he's an awesome vet to have on the floor. And speaking of All-Stars, you got Bam Adebayo playing like a legit All-Star. Maybe he should have been named to the Eastern Conference All-Star team this year, or at the very least, an injury replacement. You know, that's for another video, but this dude is awesome. He's going to bring hustle, defense, playmaking, all at the center spot on a game-to-game -game basis. He's not going to shoot the three, but that's okay because you've got guys in Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, even Kelly Olenek who can fill it up from deep. So when this team is on, then they are a force. They have offense, defense, inside scoring, outside scoring. One of the best coaches in the league in Eric Spolstra. All that to say, this winning streak has vaulted Miami back into the playoff picture. And with the Eastern Conference being packed so close together this year, one win or loss can change your place in the standings by a few spots. Looking at the upcoming schedule, though, with games against the Hawks, Pelicans, Magic, Bulls, this Miami Heat team could even extend that winning streak to double digits. And this is where I think the Heat have an advantage to the other teams that are competing with. Miami's schedule is really in their favor. They've played some of the best teams in the NBA already and either won't have to play those teams again or will only have to play them one more time. 
It wouldn't surprise me if Miami finishes in a similar position record-wise and standings-wise to last season. To me, this is a team right now who is better than their record. But the question is, is that good enough for a championship or even a return to the Eastern Conference Finals? Unfortunately for the Heat, the answer is no, because you're not better than the Nets or the Sixers, and you're probably not better than the Bucks. So I think the Heat need to make a trade. Their most glaring issue remains next to Adebayo in the front court. Kelly Olenek, who started the majority of games next to Adebayo, can give you some production from that starting spot, but he's not the type of starter you're going to have on a championship-level team. Having a switchable big would help the Heat, especially in crunch time. So where does a trade come in? Well, the Heat made a trade for some of those same reasons last year with Jay Crowder, Solomon Hill, and Andre Iguodala. Could they swing something similar this year? I think so, and it would be great if you could get Jay Crowder back in a trade with the Suns, but I don't see them looking to give him up. The next best option, in my opinion, would be P.J. Tucker of the Houston Rockets. He's an excellent defender and a career 36% shooter from three. He really fits the Heat culture and would add a lot of experience to this team. Houston is rebuilding and reports have said he's a player the Rockets would be willing to part with. But for Miami, a team that has limited assets who they'd want to give up, what could you offer? Tucker is one of the most coveted players on the trading block, so Miami is going to have to make a pretty convincing offer. Here's what I think. A trade of Myers Leonard, KZ Okpala, and a protected first round pick could get the job done. Leonard has a team option for next year, so he's basically an expiring contract. KZ was drafted near the top of the second round in 2019. He's still young, but he's got the size and length to create mismatch potential, and he has the tools to be a multi-positional defender who can give opponents a tough time around the perimeter. Then there's a future first-round pick that Houston can add to improve the team down the line. These are all assets a team needs to get back into contention after the James Harden trade. That's what I would do, and I think it would add a new dimension and some extra wins to the Miami Heat. It's a trade that's fair for both sides. I want to know what you think in the comments, though. If you're a Heat fan, I expect a comment. Tell me your thoughts on the team so far this season and if you think a trade needs to happen. Also, be sure to leave a like on today's video. It really helps in growing the channel. And make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of the content that I've got coming down the line. Thanks for watching. My name is Troy, and I'll see you next time on the Half Court Report.